We sometimes need to handle our cats in unfamiliar ways. I mean, nail clipping and medicating immediately spring to my mind as a vet, and this is where the traffic light system will help keep your cat calm. There are ways that we are going to need to handle our cats in our lives with them that they are not naturally going to be used to. And if they're not used to them, could be kind of stressful for them. I know this is something, you know, you've talked about a lot, um, Alex. So I think it's really beneficial to practice those handling skills in advance before you need yeah. them so that your cat is i mean there's no intrinsic reason that a cat shouldn't like for instance having its claw retracted to have its nail trim there's nothing actually bad about it but it's just weird to them because it's new so if we can familiarize themselves familiarize our cats with that new sensation and get them happy with it then we can yeah then it won't be a big deal for them so i'm thinking about getting them ready for nail clipping getting them ready for tooth brushing and also being able to pick your cat up with I would say these are skills that we want our cats to know, but then I wouldn't force them on your cat if they're not into it. If your cat is not naturally loving being hugged and danced around the house, like don't use this skill to do that, yeah. but it is useful <laughs> to have it in your toolkit. And for yeah. all of them, kind of strategy wise, I would think about like, taking some time to First of all, just watch your cats. I like to think about a traffic light system. So like a green, um, amber and red zone in terms of how our cat is looking and feeling. So like a green zone cat would be a cat that's like super happy and relaxed. that have a very open body language. Like we all know what our cats yep. are like when they're happy yeah, and relaxed. Yeah. So kind of observe those, those cues in your cat. And then an amber zone cat is a cat that's just starting to feel a little bit unsure. You might notice them, I mean, just even looking away or like trying to disengage with something, maybe licking their lips. Their posture often starts like contract in a little so they might just like get on there uh, get their elbows up and like hunch down a little bit they're not like totally freaked out in the amber zone but they are just giving us some signs that they're like a bit bit unhappy with what's yeah. going on and then you've sure. got like a red zone cat so it's a cat who's super stressed maybe flat ears maybe backing into a corner you've probably seen this when you you might have seen this i guess when you've taken your cat to the vet it's one of the like most obvious places that we would see our cats under that sort of stress so that's a zone we never want to go into and then you can use those zones in your mind to think about kind of always trying to keep your cat in the green zone if you see your cat in the amber zone take things back a step with what you're doing in your training. So if I was training my cat to have their claws trimmed, I would think about what's like the minimum first step I can take on the path to what I need to achieve. So it might be just touching my cat. It's not a given that they're gonna be cool with that. They might be, and you can move on a few steps, but if my cat is not at all like comfortable or used to the idea of being touched, I might just stroke them on like an easy to stroke area, the back of their like back. I might observe their body language they're in the green zone. Great. I give them a reward. So I'm pairing that with a reward. And then I might, if they're in the green zone at that stage, I might take things on a little level. So maybe could I actually touch them in the vicinity of their paws? If they're in the green zone, great reward, carry on. Amber zone, they're like, mm, I'm not sure about that. I can take things back a step. So I yep. can go back to stroking them on a safe area. And essentially you let your cat dictate whether it's like a green for go, like try to try the next thing, pairing with rewards all the way, or like an amber, mm, I'm not ready for that yet. Let's um, work more on the easy stuff before we progress. You can do that with all of these handling skills with picking up, you know, just getting your cat at first used to having your hands on the side of them without lifting them up at all. And then you take things one step further. And yeah, I think, you know, those are really nice things to work on with your cat because you can essentially take the stress out of those situations and turn them from something where your cat's like, I've never experienced this before, so it's probably a no-go. I'm not into it to oh that's the thing that comes with treats i'm really into that let's let's go i'm into it but to get the full benefit you need to know the basic training techniques and skills to teach your cat which we dive into in our full conversation which is linked on screen so tap on that video i'll see you there and until the next time i'm veterinarian dr alex this is our pets health because they're family <laughs> <laughs>